end of the show. That informs, improves, and inspires racers everywhere. The Northwest Race Report. The Northwest Race Report is brought to you by O'Hagan's Cart Supply, Lebanon, Oregon. You want to win? O'Hagan's wants to help. And by True Tech Automotive, Hazeldale, Washington. Get your car, truck, or tow rig repaired the right way, the True Tech way. And by Scott Seal Coat and Striping, Federal Way. For over 25 years, whether you're sealing or striping, you can count on Scott. And by Southern Oregon's Karting Headquarters, Speed City, LLC. Keeping racers on track with quality support and friendship. You're tuned in to the Northwest Race Report exclusively at terrybridges.com. And now back to your horsepower and performance hosts, Terry Bridges and Glenn Lippy Tower. Oh, what is going on, racers? I'm your horsepower and performance host, Terry Bridges. And uh, we're going to kind of do a little short uh, fall focus uh, classic pre-race show here on Friday night. Right here from the uh, Northwest Race Report Studios in Ole, Washington. And uh, I got to welcome my uh, special guest, kind of a surprise, a Thanksgiving surprise of, of all things. And uh, it's my man, uh, former promoter of Salem Speedway, Roger Freeborn. What's going on, Rog? Hey, Terry. Thanks for having me on here. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, man. Same to you. Um, boy, a lot of stuff's been happening in your life, hasn't it? Oh, there's been some changes going on. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. So now, first of all, where where are you living at now? I'm out in uh, the west side of Portland, out in the Helvetia area. Oh, yeah. Helvetia. Those of you, you all you guys have been to Helvetia, I'm thinking. Most people yeah, have, right? Yeah, they've all been to the Helvetia Tavern. The, the, the big burgers and stuff there. But uh, So, h- how's life? I mean, is it pretty good? Life is really good. Life is really good, yep. I've uh, turned my uh, tires in and uh, steering wheel in for surfboards, and I'm hitting the beach. Are you really? Yeah. Yep. Now, how many times have you been out this year? Have you been out at all? <laughs> Did you go out all this summer? Oh, yeah. I was... I. Uh, I, I was down there 27 nights this year that where I actually stayed overnight for the weekends. And uh, sometimes I'd go down after just in the evening just for the sunset and surf till sunset and have a bonfire, then drive back up to Portland. Well, and for those of you that don't know, um, Roger was a beach bum in his <laughs> in his in his younger days. Right. I mean, well, do you yeah, yeah. Uh, in Hawaii and and. Uh, didn't you live in Hawaii for a while? Yeah, 15 years in Hawaii on wow. the North Shore, of the surfing mecca of the world. So Right. And that's almost a have to to learn how to surf there, isn't it? Yeah, they'll kick you out if you don't surf. Yeah. 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 Wow. So, and and uh, Bailey's doing good. and, and Bailey and Aaron are doing good, yeah. Um, Bailey's getting into the surfing with me. Aaron's kind of following a little bit. Right. But Bailey really wants to get into it. So that's kind of cool being out in the water. Yeah. With the that's really cool, man. Now, I know you were doing, are you still doing the picnic table thing too? or I am. Yeah. 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 And uh, moved it into indoor furniture also. And that's kind of kind of the indoor furniture started kind of as a hobby, but found out that it, uh, people right. wanted to buy it. So, you know, I'm selling that too. Right. And then you still kind of had your hand in the racing deal because you were helping out the Portland Carding Association, being a race director there. And how'd that go? Uh, well, you know, I made it through probably three quarters of the summer and then I just uh, kind of had it with, uh, I, you know, it's been 15 years of race directing yeah. and Soon it starts gnawing on you sooner or right. later, and you know you, sometimes you just have to say I've had enough. Right. So rather than ruin it for everybody else, it's just best to exactly. Yeah. Just yeah. You just got to walk back. away. But it seems like Salem somehow or another, I got my hand in this this pot of glue that well, just won't let go. You know. I mean, let's face it, man. I mean, you are <clears throat> you're probably the guy that I mean, you put Salem on the map. I mean, not only just from the from the indoor standpoint, but when you we went to UAS rules that kind of brought, you know, I mean, I think that helped the BK quite extensively. And so, I mean, you've done a lot of good things for the sport. I mean, shoot, we can't deny that. Well, thanks. It was, uh, it's definitely a challenge. I like to, you know, anything I go after, I like to try and make it better than what it was. And hopefully the people after me make it, take it and do, you know, take it to the next level from where I've taken it. And I kind of see that starting to happen You're right at, uh, Salem. Um, you know, there was the, 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 uh, 
bring in the UAS and that was a controversial move at first, but it seems to be well embraced. You now. know, you, you know what? I, I, I think I was even one that was kind of like, mm. oh, yeah, yeah, you but, were. But the way you worded it was was right. You know, it was like we we have to do something just to keep things in check. And, and, and I think it was a um, I think it was a, a good move. Now, you know, looking back, maybe everybody at first was kind of like, ah, oh, what? You know, does that mean rules? No, it doesn't mean rules. It yeah. just means we need to keep everybody kind of kind of in a body, you know. Yeah, uh, we're going to keep something in them. Some things yeah. in a bottle were, you know, it. it uh, there, yeah, it's some rules, but it's more like guidelines. It, it, exactly. And, uh, you know, from. What have we been doing it for? About four or five years now, and we got the national champion here. Uh, you know, God, I know from, it's it's, it's from, something else. Yeah, it, it's something else. Yeah, I mean, it was a looking back, man. There's a, a lot of a lot of good things that um, you know, you implemented there. I mean, and and I think you said even at the start that uh, that was going to be a four or five or six year plan. You know, it's not going to yeah. just be an overnight deal. So, um. No, there was a lot of changes people had to make, you know, from running the, you know, an open KT or an open four stroke, well, you know, anything or TT 75s and whatnot. And, and looking at the guys on the East Coast and the Midwest and what they were running, um, that they, they just had to, uh, you know, up their game a yeah. little bit and mainly pay attention to what they had and get the most they could out of what they had. Well, I, here's one thing I know. Jason Suchich now knows <laughs> what you what you had to go through. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I I get I get a few calls and texts from Jason every once in a while. Actually, yeah, quite often, and uh, um, it's a tough job. You know, I'm not gonna I, I I'm not looking for sympathy or anything, pats on the back or anything. But uh, if you haven't done that job before, it's it's it. You put in a lot of hours, and it's not just at the track. And, you know, and, I mean, and, and other than having a, a, a very thick skin, you can't be very thin skinned, or you no. will be, you will be done. Yes. I mean, what 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 is what's the key to making that job? I mean, manageable. Wow, that's a question that I would have wished you would ask me this morning, so I could come up with an answer for it. Uh, you you have to be as neutral as possible once once race day starts. Once once registration opens, uh, once a driver's meeting comes along, you you just have to be neutral. You can't you you know you can have your favorites, but you got to keep them to yourself. You know because obviously you got the best seat in the house to watch the races. Right. Um, and try as best you can to see what's happening on the track, and make the call that needs to be called. And uh, you know sometimes you do it, sometimes right. you don't. Well, you, you know, some people say, you know, uh, maybe, you, you know, a guy like in your position or, or in Jason's position now that he should be, that's what he hires the other people to do. So he doesn't want to get involved unless he absolutely has to, right? So, I mean, is that, is there any truth to that? Because, you know, like Bob says, I don't, you know, I'll get involved when, when I absolutely have to, but otherwise that's why I have these people, you know, here to, to make sure that I don't have to. Well, and I think Bob's position, the, the position he's taken is correct, you know, because he's not seeing what's happening on the track. But I think each race director, no matter what track you go to, is going to take a different level, a different approach of mm -hmm. how they get involved. Mm -hmm. I I was pretty hands-on. I am, I think, in some some instances maybe too too hands on um jason is he's developing his his uh style right now right and it seems to be real similar to to what i was doing um it's but it's a tough job and, and you're you're you can only be as good a race director as the people you have working along with you and the, you know those corner workers are important because you have to have a bunch of sets of eyes out there because that's a 10 second track you know and in some cl cl um, classes a nine nine second yeah. track and you can't be watching the race you got to be watching what's going on because you, sometimes yeah, yeah. you're called upon to make a help make a decision oh I constantly at the end of the day I'd, I'd get asked did you see that race i'm going well i watched it but i wasn't watching the race i'm watching you know, there's two carts in the back who are starting mm. to bang. So yeah. you're watching the back. Well, I, or, I think the, uh, the perfect example of that was uh, BK3. 
yeah. when 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 yeah. uh, Garrett Thomas and we had to go back before we had the tape. Remember how much uh-huh. trouble we had trying to look at that tape? I mean, I looked at it and you think you can remember, but no, nah. no, it's, no, it's, no. It, everything happens so quick yep. that you 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 have to rely on your corner workers. And sometimes the corner worker at the other end of the track saw it better than you do if you're right up in front yeah. of it. You and, know? and you know, wh- and, and even we went through this with the tape. It was like, you know, what you think you saw isn't really isn't necessarily it, what it. happened. No, exactly. Because no. it looked like so-and-so cut down. Well, really? No. Well, yeah. you, you know, and, and, and you have to make that call. You have sec- literally seconds Split to make seconds. that call. You can't sit there and say, okay, you know what? We're taking a two-hour break while we make a call. This isn't football. We don't have right. instant, instant replays and official timeouts. You know, it, it's it's like the you know we'll go go back to I think it was BK through four, right? Four or five were for the sock. The sock yeah. incident yes. was, yes. was felt. You yes. know, and, um, how do you make that call? Nobody well, saw it. Nobody saw it, and all of a sudden it pops up on the internet, which is like racing's worst friend but best friend also is, and uh everybody's uh, you know all of a sudden a video pops up of, of a sock being thrown up okay well the race has been called and everything's been official everything's official and that's that was a new one to me you know i'd never had that happen before i don't think anybody really <laughs> who, yeah. who's gonna rat themselves out three yeah, days yeah, after yeah, the yeah, race yeah, right yeah, I mean, yeah yeah exactly who's gonna post a video of themselves uh quote and, unquote cheating and i still uh, wonder why he did that. Oh, it doesn't really matter. Wonder why. I, I guess why is really irrelevant. But to you know, it was kind of hard for me to sit there. I got everybody texting me and calling me. Of what do I do? Know, uh, and they all yeah. they're all saying a different thing. Uh, you know, DQ them, uh, let it go, DQ them. And so I said, okay, you know what? I'll, I'll get, I'm going to give it 24 hours and think about it. And and then I just stopped answering the phone and the text at that point. And I thought about it, and, and I, I kept coming. In fact, I believe I called you a few times, on, on actually more than a few times, on what you thought. And I finally came to the thought, you know, that race was called at, like, 10 o'clock Saturday night. That, in the rules, all calls are final. Yeah, that's it. I went back to it. You know, it wasn't popular with everyone. And I said, the, the you know, results stand. Right. And I took some Right. And, and you know what? Grace Nobody that, really but... said anything, even at the time. I mean, even if they would have seen it, you know, yeah. I, I don't think Chase said anything. I don't I don't think uh, anybody said and, anything. And the bottom of the line was, you know, did that really? Uh, and, and but this this goes a step further beyond what, you know, but it was part of my my thought process at the time. Did that change the result of the race? Yeah, uh-huh. but 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 but, you know, right. You are probably not. But but there again. The point of the matter is it's the principle of it. Right, You're not right. supposed to do anything under a red flag, you know, right, whatever. But right. there again, it, it it refers back to that rule of the race was called. There wasn't any official protest. Exactly. I can't go back now and, and re, you know, shoot. Then we could go back to any call three three months later and go, hey, you know what? That move, we <laughs> after looking at it, <laughs> it's no good. And, and you and I know that's happened on the asphalt before, too, you know, where we get a video the next day and, um, but the rules are pretty cut and dry there. But yeah, I mean, the race is called, and, and it was I, the right I, call. I, it, it was. I, it was I, the I right felt, call. I felt good about it after I finally decided to do it. I know some people didn't, and and uh, you know, as here we go. As a race director, oh well, too bad. That's my call. Right, right, that's wrong how, or that's indifferent. How, that's you, how you have you, to be. You've got to stand behind. You, you it. can't. You you have to take all friendships out of it, and. Uh, uh, even even if they even if you don't like the person, you have to take that out of it, you know, and, and you have to make your call off of based off of, you know, the set of rules that you're enforcing and what just happened in front of you. Doesn't matter who it was. Right. Well, that brings up the great question now. So a weekend like like this weekend. So you've got uh, we've got the Northwest Ford Focus Midgets who. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. It, it is. I don't know that they've really. Uh, they've been there not as a not as a series, right. but maybe individually or a car here, a car there. And then you've got the the cage carts there, and then you, you know also the 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 bikes run on a different weekend, not this weekend, but still between the bikes and like a series like the Ford Focus uh, guys and the Speedway guys and the cage cart guys. Is there a officiating style that you have to kind of bear in mind when you go into these different events or? Is it just kind of you've got to treat every 
everything the same? I don't know if I want to answer that question. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll answer it because, I, you know, it's like um, I can say with the with the the bikes are probably the easiest, you know, because there's there's basically two rules to enforce on that on a, on bike night. Don't jump the start and don't pass under the local yellow. That's pretty easy to officiate. Speedway carts, I would say, just due to most of those guys have run on the asphalt under IKF rules. Mm -hmm. They're pretty much used to running under a set of rules. They're the they're the second easiest to to officiate. The cage carts, um, basically never really had any rules, and that was I'll probably take some grief over that comment right there, or where I'm headed with that. And then we came up with rules through a rule committee of actual you know racers and and whatnot and we all agreed that this was going to be the base rule set that we we went with so but it was the first time that up here and uh, you know in the salem area that there were ever, ever was ever a rule package for the cage cards in black and white on paper right and it took some adjusting you know to to get used to it but it's pretty much stayed the same i don't think they've made a whole lot of changes to that rule package since we wrote it right and so that tells you we there was it was a volunteer committee that worked with me on that and we put a lot of hours into that thing yeah and and, and uh what up scott keeney in the house checking in right on buddy yeah i you know so well, so then that leads to this weekend. We've got the cage carts, and then you've got the, the focus midgets. So you've almost got two different rule packages. One is a spec thing. You can't touch anything. Everything's a sealed unit. And those guys have been running. Uh, they've run a whole season or two seasons now and whatnot. So they know the rules there. So it's more or less any infractions that aren't probably going to be um, tech related, they're going to be, you know, on, on tra track, on track, yeah. nudging, bumping, yeah. rubbing, that kind of thing. So that probably, I don't know, that, that could ease the burden or that could make it worse. You know, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm one of those where it's kind of like you, you've got to allow a little bit of that bumping because once you, once you start calling all this tic tac stuff, now you've made your bed. And now anytime there's a touch or a rub, somebody wants a call. It's the hardest call to make, Terry. That you know it that that, that is where how far you know, I, I do believe rubbing is racing, but everybody has a different definition of rubbing. You know? Right. And so how far do you let you know, from a race director this is from a race director's point of view, who you're sitting here thinking about, okay, this I don't want anybody any ambulance runs. I want this race to try to go uh, green to checker. Um, you know, a bunch of other things going, going right. on that maybe, maybe you know, the spectators or teams or even drivers don't think about. I'm not doing this for me so so much as I'm doing it for the people on the track. Um, right. You, you got, you kind of almost, you, you have your rule package and you define, you try and define rubbing as racing, but you also have to have your own judgment and I know people don't uh, don't want the race director to have judgment, but uh, y at some point in time, if it starts getting crazy out there, you have to worry about it actually somebody getting hurt. Right. You know, and you do have to, you know, at least throw a rolled up black at somebody. Well, you know, in, in, in basketball officiating, they have this uh, they have this saying that if if um, you've got to get on, you've got to nip stuff in the bud early because. Right. Once it gets out of hand, it's, it's really no, it's really no regaining it. I mean, it, it's, it's hard just, to reel it's just, back. It in. is hard to reel back in, and so you've got to maybe set the set the tone. But yet, you know, you you got to be consistent too. You can't call one ticky tack and then let a, a ticky tack call. You know, and you're going, well, you mean to tell me you called this thing, but you're not going to call that? You know, and yeah, even though even know, though the two I, things yeah, could be yeah. totally unrelated, one looks worse than it is. I mean, they also say, too, right, you've got 10 bodies running around in a confined area. This is what the basketball rule says. And it's kind of the same as the racetrack. Sure, is sure. You've got 10 guys running around uh, in a confined space, you know, all open. And uh, there is going to be some contact, some of which may be severe. Right. But it doesn't necessarily constitute a violation or a foul. Right. I think you have to look at 
was it intentional? And that's probably the hardest one to prove. Maybe Correct. it's easier on the basketball court than it is in no. Washington. <laughs> and, um, but I think the, the the big one is, was it intentional? And uh, my call used to be uh, avoidable contact if I thought it was attention, intentional. Right. Because it, you don't know. It's, it, it, there's only one call right. I made at Salem. The guys that I made it against know who I'm talking about. Where I called it intentional. Well, you know, and you and we've all been there. Even you, as a driver, has been there. Where you 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 see that hole, and and you get in there, and and you start to enter the hole, and you see it close up, and you go, oh crap! Yeah. I, you know, I I shouldn't have, done, but here I am, yeah. and now I'm gonna, you know, I don't mean to, but uh -huh. boom, there's the touch, there's the mess. Is you know, is that avoidable? Con you know, uh, you know, is it? It goes back to that judgment thing of you know, was it intentional? Well. Heck no, it wasn't intentional. We all we've all been there where that hole's dry. So that's where an official's got to be really, you know. Sometimes you still got to make that call, even though you know, boy, it sure looked like he was in there. But where the other car was, I mean, God, it's a it's a tough deal. It seems like toward at the beginning of the race and at the end of the uh, race, whether it's a heat or a main. Those seem to be the times when those calls are going to come up because, uh, you know, at the beginning, everybody's trying to get out front and turn one. Right. And at the end, you know, they see the white flag and or they've been counting the laps. So they know it's time to turn up the heat. You know, well, I, I would think I would think that that's a smart race director is going to use those heat races and those preliminary events to kind of nip it in the bud and set the tone as to yeah. what's going to be accepted and what isn't that way they've run two heats or whatever it is and now when they get to the main event they kind of have an idea okay look we've run these two heats he's we, there's been just some little stuff and he's you know he's <laughs> nipped it or gave me a warning or whatever so i know that's not going to stand here now so uh you know I, but i think the biggest thing all they really want is is, is they want some follow-through Right, I mean, they want some follow through. One of the biggest thing I hear is they want it fairly, fairly, uh, um, oh, addressed across the field, and that's the hardest thing to probably um, communicate to the different teams out there that you are doing your best to fairly uh, uh, administer the rules across the field. Because, like I say, no matter how much you want it, the, that everybody wants to take judgment calls out of it. You still have to have judgment calls to some extent. I, I agree, you know? and there's always going to be that, you know. And it's and it's easy for everybody to sit back where you've got time to analyze yeah, the yeah. call and kind of recollect what happened and see everything up to. Because let's face it, there's a lot of times you don't see that move that started the mess. All you see is is the, the, is the it, yes yeah. is the retaliation when. Really, uh, maybe this guy over here should have got it first, right. but you didn't see that, so right. you really can't do it. So even if you got six sets of eyes on the track, th that that's why it's so. It's same thing in basketball. They say you got to see the whole play, you got to see the start, you got to see it develop, and you got to see it finish. And I think that's still the same. I mean, basketball. And I mean, I'm telling you, it, as an official wise, if you could follow those, you know, start, develop, finish, you got to see the whole play. You can't just come in halfway through it and say, okay, yeah, I, you know, boom. Uh, maybe you pass on some of that stuff, yeah. especially if, you, yep. if you've seen this mess. Well, you know what? He had a little bit coming, so now we're even Steven, and now we'll nip it in the butt if it goes, you know, right. any, any worse. But and any you try in that situation where it's iffy, maybe a rolled up black at everybody that you think was involved. You right. Know, and um, the rolled up black doesn't mean you're off the track. Doesn't even mean you're going to get a, a flying black the next time it happens. But right, it, it's just to indicate, at least in my mind, it's to indicate that something just happened that that you know is in the rules, and we don't we don't want to we want to see it stop now. You know? No, and, absolutely. Well, here's 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 the bottom line, and, and we we can move on with this. Is and this is a guarantee as an official. Fifty are gonna love you. Fifty are gonna hate you. No matter no no matter yeah, what. It doesn't matter where you go. Might be more like thirty seventy, but yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so we got we got the the big focus weekend coming up this weekend, uh, and the cage carts. Um, and midgets run great at Salem. You know, I mean, the last year we had good turnouts with with uh, with the midgets. Biles got back and won. You know, and he yes, he just 
turning it up and then he had his, his accident you know but uh, he, right he got his uh, first win down there that was that was yeah. pretty cool you know i, I mean it, and the way the racetrack's been the last couple of weeks i mean it's been uh you know chris hatch said last week i mean it was probably the best he's ever and seen it part of that reason i can tell you why that one is after having built that thing with well not myself but being part of building it every year is they got the dirt in the building before it started to rain this year so there was no wet dirt and we didn't have that uh this year there wasn't you know like the first race or two there were a lot of potholes that had to dry out and sometimes we had to just from being too them. soft just from the dirt pile yeah. outside being too wet you know with the you'd have one wet area that was that was wetter than everything else. right and this year they got all the dirt in before it started to to rain, so that's why the track is so good this year because wow. the the dirt was dry and it could it was more manageable to you know surgically water for a lack of a better term. Right. So you're still not just adding water to that real wet area already right. again, yeah. making it a lumpy mess. Yeah. Right. Well, you know, and and you, you, so then we were talking today. I saw there. Um, I know that uh, Matt Streeby had posted that, you know, he was going to take uh, Nick Evans and Ryan Cully and uh, uh, Chance Crum, who had a phenomenal season last year. But um, he picked those as the top three. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm going, OK, that's probably fair. I mean, those are the those are obviously, you know, three of the front runners. But you've got Renee Angel there. You've yep. got you've got Shane Smith, um, who who both have seen a lot of Salem maybe not this role well, Renee has Renee's but, Renee's but Shane hasn't everything. but but still it's it's that familiarity with 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 just Salem that I think yeah, yeah. maybe could give them a little bit of an advantage I mean especially Renee, Renee I mean, she, yeah, she's, she's got... seen it three or four times already this year so uh you know I don't know is that gonna play a part you know I don't know these guys are pretty good so I mean you know Salem does have some character of its own it, it's a it's a short it's a really you know it's it's the ultimate short track for these guys. They're not used to running on, on a track this short. Um, I saw Shane out at uh, run out run out at sunset this summer. He looked like he had some you know mechanical issues, but didn't really look like he had any driving issues. Um, Renee, she's probably got, jeez, <laughs> you know, one of the top three lap. Oh yeah, you know, I mean, if we're talking uh, number of laps around there. Yeah. She's she's she if may she be the she, right now she may be the leader because a lot of the guys yeah, that yeah. are running don't run anymore. So, yeah, yeah. but I would think even this year, having run her UAS cart there, mm -hmm. and it and, and I don't know if you weren't there last weekend, but she brought a KT in there, and I mean, dude, she 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 mopped up. I mean, yeah, that, I saw it, the video. It was just one, yeah. she was killer fast. So. You know, so she's got some time in her UAS cart. She's got her some time in the in, in, uh, in she even ran a cage cart, you know, uh, mm -hmm. the first mm -hmm. one before she got rid of everything. So she's seen it in three different cars that, man, I can't help but think that that's got to be a, a pretty good advantage. A it's it's got to be a good starting advantage, at least, you know. Um, yeah. I mean, they spend, you know, Shane and, and Renee spend uh uh, a lot of time down there and and they do a lot of tweaking on all different kinds of right. you know carts and cars and the other thing that they do is you know if they come down for a speedway show a lot of times they'll stay for the bike show so they'll they'll watch you know they sit there and um they watch that track yeah and it doesn't matter i don't care what you say i i think people learn just from watching sure. right yeah i mean there's yeah. a lot to be learned there but but then you look at chance crumb okay he comes He's always been an open wheel kid. He's he's been in the quarter midgets, which runs awful short tracks. Yeah. So, man, I mean, just, you know, it it could go either way. I mean, um, you know, I mean, Evans, he was the he's the champ. So, you know, he obviously knows how to apply different uh, setups and whatnot to different tracks. So, and, and Kali was strong. I mean, and you got Caleb. I mean, there's just so many. Um, I mean, there's a lot of I good. Coley's got some time on that track too, though. Yeah. So he's not one to discount. No, uh, I mean, um, I th I think there's. Uh, I mean, you know, Shane Smith. I mean, granted, he, yeah. you know, he's been running. He's run those before. I mean, I think this is the most he's run was last year. But but still, I mean, that's. Uh, I think it, it's going to be real interesting. It is going to be real interesting. I, 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 I can't wait. You may know this now. I don't know how many how many they're planning on putting out in the heats in the main yet. But I, I don't. I, I just know that I saw the early on in the week. I saw the roster where it was. Uh, 
I don't know. I think there was 18 at that time, but then there was a, a couple. Uh, one guy from Canada that that that's coming down, uh, wow. and uh, <clears throat> so that should be interesting. I, I know that um, it's going to be live on on uh, Racing Boys. So um, you know, I don't I don't know how much I'm going to be. I'll be calling the cage cart stuff, but I don't I don't know how much I'll be calling the. Uh, you know, I don't know. It, it's one of those deals. We'll wait and see what goes on. But yeah, well, they'll miss out if you aren't calling. Well, it. <laughs> I would think so. But anyway, um, but you know that 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 bears the question too. You know, those cage carts are they tend to like a little bit? Are they going to like the same kind of racetrack? I mean, you know, they, I, I. I think so. Um, the, the same as the midgets. Yeah, I mean that's uh, what I'm saying. Uh, could because uh, if they're running first, I mean they could do. I mean, are they going to tear the track? I mean, I don't know. I, well, you know. I think uh, what I've heard over the years is everybody wants the track to be ripped. And um, how do I do this without getting anybody in trouble? The guy that puts it all together. Uh, it's been a constant argument of, uh, that I've had of, of ripping the track before shows. Um, I, I, I'm pretty sure that the midgets would prefer a rip track. I, I know that just from talking to cage carters, they would like a rip track or they, the, the, basically they want they want to burn up on top. And I think just the nature of the dirt at Salem, mm -hmm. it's pretty hard to get that. A, uh, a, that, a true cushion. A true, a true cushion. Yeah. 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 A true cushion. Like you're going to find on a bigger track that, you know, but, outdoor. Well, well, I don't know. Uh, I don't. I, I think you were scoring that first one, and and uh, you might have saw Bryson James up there in the main event. Yeah, I holy watched smokes, people, he was. This is the thing. I'll get myself in trouble now since I'm not going to be there until maybe Sunday, and and we'll I'll watch your Facebook feed afterward if it says hang him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I've watched I watched Bryson run the rail up there. Uh, Oh, this was three or four years ago. But Tommy Brown and uh, I can't remember who else it was. They went 15 laps, inches off the off the top there, and there was no berm. They it was all set up. It was all set up in mm -hmm. skill. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, you know, I understand wanting that berm there, right? But I I truly believe that if you set your cart up to run that rail up and there, not have to rely on it, uh, yeah, yeah, that you can do it. Well, you know, and and th but the crazy thing was is even when like w the thing I noticed when when James was up there at uh, at the uh, the opener there, um, for the cage cart challenge was everybody watched him go by on the top side, but nobody went up. There. Nobody goes up. No, no, no. They stay down on the bottom, and I I I'm I don't get it either. You know, you watch somebody that comes up there and and. You know, and I mean, they blow Bryson, by you, and, and you go. Got a lot. Of, I mean, he's got a lot of talent, and he's got a lot of seat time. You yeah. know, he's real fortunate to have that, and he he is a thrill to watch him. Um, but that's not saying that there aren't other drivers out there. That oh yeah, there's no. Well, hey, we can, we we can't necessarily uh, discount um, uh, uh, Osborne, Christian Osborne. No, I mean, he was he was yeah, dude was fire. money. You know, so. <laughs> And, and 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 you know like I do that's a you come in there and you mop up I mean yeah. uh, granted you can say what you want Devin Borden wasn't there but it was his first time in a 500 so you know would he have been all the way down eh, you know it's one of those things he can wheel but still that's a confidence builder yeah. coming into this deal so he's coming back now and he's saying hey uh, you know I'm I'm uh I'm here. I'm, the, I'm the guy I'm here right? yeah I'm the guy <laughs> and, and then same with uh Nick Evans he goes you know I just I just won this series over the summer. So yeah. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to be um, ready to go. But then you've got Renee who's saying, well, yeah, that's, that's probably true. Yeah. You got confidence, but I've got three or four or five races in here already on different kinds of stuff. So I know the line, I know what this track does. Plus 15 or 20 years. Yeah, of running Absolutely. Track. <laughs> just being around. And, and so does, so does Shane. He knows, yeah. he kind of knows how the, 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 the action works there. So, Man, I don't know. You're right. It's going to be uh... Salem is a hard track to read. I I don't know that I'd make it call it one of the hardest tracks, but you can you can pretty much bet that it's going to be wet and slick and hot laps. And by the time the main comes down, it's going to be rubber down. You know, and maybe not dry slick, but no, maybe not bit... dry slick. But the <laughs> definitely, I know when when both my daughter and I used to race there, 
uh, I wouldn't set up for the heats. I'd just say, let's try and get, let's finish as good as we can for the heats. I'd set the both carts up for the main. Yeah. And we'd and run that set up all day long. And I think that's what you got to do. I mean, I mean, the heat races are merely just an extension of practice, right? They right. don't mean anything. They're just there to get you some laps, and that should be dialing your setup stuff in. But here's the cool thing with Salem Speedway. So all of you guys, spread the word that you're not going to be able to go find an event like this indoor, wheel-to-wheel, -wheel, with some of the best in the Northwest for $10. No. Right? I mean, I, 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 the stands should be packed. I mean, if, if you truly are a race fan... If you just want something to do on a Friday or Saturday night fan, right. it's ten bucks. Right. <laughs> I mean there's a there's a full snack bar there, there's burgers, there's you know, Mama Leach has got some good I mean, it's not just the nasty yeah, yeah. gut bombs. They're pretty decent, right? Yeah. They've got the hot dogs and all that stuff, but the only thing that's missing is the the beer, but hey, we already uh, know I, that I, doesn't I, happen. I, but I don't think the beer is missing. Well, yeah. It might be missing for sale, but it's not missing. Right. <laughs> but but still, it's going to be for $10. Yeah. There's no nothing in Salem you're going to do for $10 on a Saturday night yeah. to get better entertainment than that. You're not even going to do a movie for that. Even you close. can't. No. Shit, you can't even buy popcorn for that. And that's $10. You know, if you come in at 8 in the morning, you're good till closing. You yeah. know, 8 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night, and you can leave and come back for, uh, during the break. Yeah, and that's one of the cool things I always say about Salem Speedway is you get more bang for your buck there than just about any racetrack up and down the West Coast. I mean, for $10, and you get the day show and the night show, um, so 20 bucks for the weekend because they're going to be there on Sunday. Yeah. I mean, good grief. Where else are you going to go for $20? I mean, I don't know. You can't. <laughs> There's <laughs> no. nothing there, you know? So, um, plus it's going to be live on, on Racing Boy. So, I, you know, <clears throat> you know, the people have been saying stuff about that, too. You know, they're saying, yeah, geez, I don't know if I'm a big fan of the 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 – I mean, it's cool to watch, but does it get people down there to see it? You know, uh, yeah, I don't know that it makes any difference. The ones that are going to go are going to go, and the ones that aren't aren't. You know, that's just the yeah. way it is. I don't think anybody's staying home saying, hey, I'm going to watch it on TV and not go to the – racing's just one of those things that's better being there, I think. It definitely is better being there. You, you Unless it's a huge impact. track like Daytona or something where, you know, you're going, hey, is that <laughs> where'd they go, right? I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. So – well, shoot. Yeah, it should be a, a whale of a show. Uh, I'm looking forward to going to I know they're practicing now. They go from – they're just getting ready to start here, about 10 minutes yeah, or so. Yeah, go 6 o'clock. Uh, they can go live. And, is, is, uh, is, is, is three hours – is that enough practice? Well, I don't know. It is for the race director or whoever's working the hot <laughs> grid because I'll tell you what, that's the longest three hours I've ever spent in my life standing on that grid of sending people out in groups of three to five minutes you know, at a time. But I – you know, there aren't a lot of dirt tracks that offer practice on a weekly basis. They right. might offer a practice at the beginning of the year, one in the middle of the year. Salem's offering one every Friday night. Mm -hmm. I mean, dude, if you got something you want to, you know, you want to make some changes, don't be making them on race day. Come in and practice. It, they, you don't pay a pit pass. You just yeah. pay. You just pay the practice fee, which is thirty bucks. Which I, you know, I, 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 I think that's reasonable. Yeah, and to, to to come in and do testing, yeah. It's fully reasonable. Get seat time. You know seat time, Terry. I mean, I've heard you talk about it. There's well, it, you know, it's no substitute. We for both that. know it is right. I mean, yeah. it's it's uh, yeah. So if you're thinking about coming, it, it it is cage cart weekend. So the speedway carts are not going to be there, but the but the cage carts are going to be there. The uh, Ford Focus uh, Midget Series is going to be there. They're going to be live on Racing Boys. I mean, uh, it's their first. They call it the uh, Fall Focus Classic. So this will be pretty neat. And, uh, you know, I, I, w I guess we'll see how it goes. I mean, new events like this, is it you kind of just see how the first one goes and, <laughs> yeah. and, and see if there's a second annual? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, you do. Um, I know we've, we've tried several things while I was race director, and you just kind of hold your breath until registration closes and you know, right. let, let everybody know, what. Well, here's how many we got entered. So if they get, if they get 20-plus – they get that's twenty gonna, plus. That's a, gonna that's be a win. A, it's going to be if they get fifteen, th it'll be a win. Yeah. You know, I mean, you think about it. How many? You know, at fifteen, I would have to think a little bit more. You know, we kind of did this for the moment, the show tonight, but uh, I'd have to really see them. You know, tonight, if there were fifteen of them there, how many I'd actually put out for the main? But right. I'd, I'd consider somewhere between twelve and. 
maybe be, sixteen. It'd be right because I mean with the with the UAS carts, uh, what is it? I mean fourteen or yeah, sixteen? I think yeah, it was the most we've yeah. ever done. So yeah, they're similar speed wise. I I, I think so. Yeah, but, but they're a little bit wider. So you got to. This is where you come into. You don't want to cheat somebody out of a chance into the A. But you got to think about okay, who's going to flip and die? You know, and that was the yeah. extreme. But who's going to flip? Cr- you know, have a mess right maybe they're okay but they just you know they just spent five grand on on fixing the cart because we put too many carts out on the track yeah, so yeah. that's something that goes through you know race director's mind right and, uh, and, I, and i think i think everybody knows you got to earn your way in there and if they don't make it i mean hey you you know personally I mean, if i take the race director hat off and the and the the racer and fan uh spectator hat on i say put 20 out there. well no i'd say i i and, and this is where we differ and that's fine. No, um, I'm just saying. I, I want to see you earn it. You know, I want it to be hard, like the Buddha. You know, it's uh, it's like, and even the Cage Cup. Now you got if you've won one of those races, oh my God, you've 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 earned it. You I have mean, earned it. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot to get to. You know, I think I believe that anybody who pays the entry fee to either of those races has a shot. Obviously, there's the favorites. But right stuff happens out on the it, track yeah it, it certainly does and and that that right there i think is and, and i will say this i mean the cage cart guys week in and week out um they earn their keep yeah i mean if you win in that series there the the, the cage cart challenger or, or even a, a red bluff event or anything i mean just the sheer number yeah is 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 you know staggering and, and all the things that can go wrong so it's a uh, it's a lot of luck and it's a lot of skill and it's a lot of uh, I don't know preparation. What but yeah, being at the right place at the right time because you know you know like I do that's a <clears throat> excuse me that's a big part of it is just sometimes that break just falls your way and yeah other nights you know you you, you can't find your you behind that, with you both know, hands with, you know with the, with the with the cage carts you know there's a lot of yellows and and um, sometimes. You know, they go your way sometimes. They right. right. Well, know. look at Borden. He was out there the first time, and they had two, not one, but two motors with the exact same problem. They both were in for crank repairs, and they had them out. And I don't know. They said it was a timing issue of the crank, you know, where the guy split the cranks and didn't get, you know. But both motors did the exact same thing. So they had to put a third motor on. <laughs> and, I mean... And by then, you know, I mean, he darn near made the show, but by then he didn't have any laps. He didn't have any time. That was his first time there. And, and then you look at Johnny Burke. You know, he, he went through three motors. Yeah. They popped one in practice, and then they put it, got it together and put another one on and popped it. And then he ended up popping one in the main event. So he didn't even finish. So, I mean, oh, man. But then he could turn around this weekend and be – King Midas, you know, everything he touches is gold. So. Uh, yeah, and it's it's not a cheap sport, you know. It, it's like I, that that's an argument that I, I or keep hearing is we got to make racing cheaper. I mean, you know what? It's just not a cheap sport. And, no. And this is the affordable level, what's going on at Salem and the local. Yeah, absolutely it is. I mean, well, well but you look at the – I, I, I think that is the, the big draw. Yeah, I think right that's word. the big draw. of No, I just think that's the big draw of the Focus Midget Series, too. That's a step above. Sure. But it's a spec motor, right? It's nobody's nobody's can work on them. I mean, they've, they've got a uh, – I, I believe they have a spec tire rule right. there, so – Man, it makes it. Uh, everybody knows what they're going to get. They know what they're going to be working with, and they know this is how it's going to be. I mean, now what you do with that is is all on you. But uh, I I I think that's the wave of the. I think that's the wave of the future. You know, spec, really. Yeah, spec motors are are definitely coming in. I know uh, I've got a buddy down in Texas that they race the uh, race saver motor in the sprint cars, and the I I does don't this isn't the gospel but i could swear that uh, it was a race saver motor that won in tulsa last year against all the right uh, open so you know it, it's still an expensive motor but you you aren't able to make all those other expensive modifications after you buy that basic expensive motor well i was blown yeah. away at the new the new setup on the cage carts where the you know you you pull the head and it's just the combustion chamber that you know, oh, so you yeah, can change, cool you can yeah, yeah, yeah you can change have, different, yeah. you can have different shavings on the on the mm-hmm. combustion. Man, that that was pretty cool. And actually. That, that's been around for a long time. Uh, 
I, I remember the first time I saw it, and it is, and I'm sure that somebody's taken it to the, you know, ridiculous level where there's, you know, eight different chambers that you can insert into it now. But, right. You know, yeah. It, it's kind of cool that you can, uh, you don't have to change the whole head and worry about, uh, you know, are you cooling? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Right it was, it was, real, I was blown away. And you look at the technology in these things, and it's like, oh my goodness, I, they're getting pretty... Like you, we were talking earlier. You know, you talk about the wing, just the just that force. I mean, oh yeah, it's unbelievable how how good these things get around. Here. Yeah, the first time I drove a cage cart, you know, I kind of looked at the wing and went, "That doesn't do anything except block my vision." Well, the first time I actually set it in a corner right and I could feel it, I was like, "Oh, this thing actually does work." Yeah. <laughs> now I don't know. Maybe you would know more than I would, but. Do they have? Do they ever race those? Do they ever have like the midgets where they have a non-wing event where they run them without wings? The midgets? No, the cage cars. I don't think I've well, ever we've, seen. Well, we've we've tried, um, and the interest seems to be there when you put it on Facebook. But then when it comes time to actually do it, there's maybe two or three people that want mm, to do it. Right. Um, can't quite figure out why, because that would, in in my mind that would be a driver's race because right. all of a sudden you've got the the parachute crutch yeah, absolutely out of, out of the way right and it's you're, you're more relying on the driver's skill and the crew chief setup of the cart to to run without that wing. right i think you know you see it you see you know wingless series run in other places yeah, absolutely why, why not you know? i don't know it might be a cool thing i mean i think it would be <laughs> well you know and the other qu question is you know, I look around, I look at the UAS stuff, and, you know, and you talk to anybody, and they say, slicks are worth a half a second everywhere, and nobody's running slicks on the thing. They're I, still running treads. I, I, yeah, I've had that I've had that uh, discussion with a lot of teams down there, and I know that uh, um, it was either last year or the year before, Renee, I was talking with her, and she was going to R&D some slicks because she was kind of uh, thinking down the same alley that, you know, I mean, slicks versus treads on a uas cart is anywhere from a quarter to a full second a lap okay well they're really i mean there's some differences between the uh the you know the uas cart and a cage cart horsepower wise there isn't right you know so if if you would think that and i think that the big fear is is that um th there's a lot that they're doing to those slicks so you know you've got to know what to do to them and when do I practice? Well, you ha you're going to have you know you, you have to come down on a Friday and practice it. Somebody's somebody's got to R and D it. I right. guess is what it is. Exactly. And, and nobody's taken that that uh, chance to. I don't I don't know quite how many you know laps Renee has put into it, and um, she's the only one that I know of that was really really going after it to see if it would work. But I can't help. I know in the five horse open, you know, five horse uh, cage court classes they're running slicks. yeah i mean and those guys are turning t lap times that are equal to the 500s big weight difference but you know they're running you know those yeah but they're they're six and seven and yeah, eight years yeah, old too yeah, i mean yeah. so yeah. I, 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 yeah it's it's a you know and even for that matter you you look at the um you look at the midgets i don't i don't know maybe would I don't know. I mean, the, the, they're they're more they're more towards a slick than they are a, a, a yeah, tread. I think, but I I don't know. I mean, I think you'll see the grinders and tire cutters and groovers and yeah. band saws and whatever out there big time. Well, uh, this weekend and when the, with them trying to figure that out because Salem's a sandy loam track, you know, that just happens to compact, you know, and mo most of the tracks that I can think of other than maybe like Castle Rock that has a lot of lava dust in it, mm -hmm. you know, are, are different. They're a little more on the clayish, loamy, loamy side rather than having the sand in it also. And there again, it's going to, I mean, there again, no matter how you slice it and dice it, uh, tires are a, tires are the, tires are a game changer. Oh, yeah, they are. If, if you can figure it out, you know, if you can figure your tires out, well, you could be down five horsepower on everybody else and win the race. Yeah, I, I mean, know. yeah, I mean, look at the UAS. I mean, I, I was down there at the when I went and did the uh, the uh, fifty thousand to win, the insane one, mm. and and some guys were talking out there, and I said, okay, so you mean to tell me that if I have if I'm dialed, 
Let's just say I am rock solid. I'm dialed. My setup is there. Yours isn't as good as mine. And you, I don't have prep and you do. You'll beat me. And you know what his answer to me was? And I can't repeat on the air, but he says every effing time. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that just blows me away that tires make. I mean, you don't even really. Well, and then the, to take it, the, like you just said, the prep makes. Yeah. So you, but they, then I asked Chris C. I said, man, what, what's going on? He says, hey, I'm going to tell you. These guys back here, they they know they know the chassis. He says, they don't need all the adjustments that you, you see. It. They, they know where it needs to be, and they've exhausted everything. So he says, you know, the next logical thing is tires. And he says, and who wants to go slower? Right. Everybody wants to go faster. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess so. I guess, you know, and, and, and that that's the way they talk back there. They don't say, hey, yeah, how much wedge? You know, and they right, say, right. hey, man, I had seven yeah. ounces on the inside and right. 10 on the outside, and I should have had 13 on the inside and, you know, six mm-hmm. on the – I mean, it's, it's – it's, 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 uh, boy, it's crazy. I and mean, that, that'll be interesting with, uh, you know, the the to kind of change the subject a little bit with the UAS Nationals being in Phoenix next year. But you're going to run in 110 degree weather on Kalichi. Well, is quiet. it that warm in September? Because I know it's it, uh, well, it's going to be 90. Yeah, you wow. can pretty much count on that. So the classic's not going to really give you anything if you go there no. to do some tuning. No, other than no, no, no. The the last classic I raced in, uh, which was I don't know four or five years ago, when they were reading tire temps in the hot grid because they didn't want anybody running tire warmers. And my tires read, you know, when they hit them, they were 31 degrees. So, wow, that's you know, crazy. Phoenix during that's Christmas. That's below freezing. That's below freezing. Yeah, we had to wait in the morning about three or four hours for the track to thaw out before we could start racing. So, yeah, Phoenix during Christmas, um, it's not always, uh, you know, there's palm trees, but it's not always the warm breezes. Yeah. Let me get an ad in here. We'll be right back. We'll do some closing here on the uh, uh, Fall Focus Classic here on the Northwest Race Report. Racing. It's preparation. It's focus. It's attention to detail. And when you try to take shortcuts, it shows. At Speed City, Southern Oregon's karting headquarters, distributor for Ultramax, Legend, QRC, Bell Helmets, and K1 Race Gear, they don't roll like that. Speed City is committed to roll the way champions roll by keeping racers on track with knowledge, integrity, and performance. No shortcuts, no negativity, no other motives. You don't just have their word on it, you've got their name on it. So get back to having fun and get to calling Speed City. Speed City, LLC, keeping racers on track with quality service and friendship. 541-531-1222. The three most expensive things you'll do in your life are buy a house, educate your kids, and go racing. What you don't need is another expense, and that's why you take your car and tow rigs to True Tech Automotive to ensure that they are maintained and repaired the right way with the right parts at the right price. And how's this for right? Extended to all racers is the In the Family 25% discount off of all preventative maintenance and repair labor. All you have to do is use the discount code NWRR to save. Now that's right. Get it done the right way. The True Tech way. True Tech Automotive, 6900 Northeast Highway 99, Hazeldale, Washington. 360-571-2302. Hey, racers, Glenn Tower here from the Northwest Race Report. You know, with the invention of the Internet, our local go-kart shops have really taken a huge blow. One of the great go-kart shops out there is O'Hagan's Carts and Supplies. They offer a great selection of carts, parts, and service. We all want to win, and O'Hagan's wants to help. O'Hagan's Carts and Supplies, Lebanon, Oregon. Hey, race fans. This is Greg Norman, driver of the 66 LO206 race cart, and you're listening to Northwest Race Report.
perfect race, you know, that it's all about the driving and your engine was in and your tires were in and your chief, your crew chief was in, you got the right passes down. Well, as a race director, you know, you've got your start time and your, you got your target finish time and you, you want zero ambulance runs and, right. and you want the lineups to come through fast on a yellow flag and yada, yada, you know, and, the, and on, on races when that clicks, you know, well, that's the win for the race director. Right. You know, and, and uh, so, you know, it's, uh, at a racetrack, a lot of people are winning and losing. Yeah. Well, those of you just tuning in late, um, but you didn't know, that's fair enough. We got uh, Roger Freeborn sitting in. We're kind of doing a pre-race show for the uh, Focus Fall Classic coming up this weekend. And, yeah, man, it was, uh, thanks for thanks for coming by on your Thanksgiving deal. I, I can't believe how close we actually were. but <laughs> Yeah. But it's cool you got to see the studio and, and uh Yeah, he's got quite the studio here. You've come a long way from just uh trying to, man. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean I, I, I all you need is the glass window right here, you know, so Well believe it or not, yeah, I could use a producer. That would be pretty cool. You could use a producer. Yeah, just go. to yeah, kind of keep yeah, things on track. Yeah. But um I think you said, you know, you told me, Oh man, you know, you need to be maybe leaning more towards going this way. So, you know. I think you're on your the right, advice right was kind of yeah. kind of good, you know, so I, I hate to say that, but <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, no, I mean, um, yeah, it's great doing it. I think the show's been kind of doing good. We picked up another couple sponsors. We picked up True Tech and Speed City, which, you know, that's kind of a shot in the arm. And, you know, hopefully it just it kind of goes because ultimately that's what the show was supposed to be for was to allow me to go to like the classic and do a couple big events a year. Sure. And, you know, and then it's, Plus, it's a it's a ton of fun. You get to hang out and BS a little bit uh, about uh, racing uh, and, and I'll stuff. I'll out there, Terry, for you. You know, I know you would never do this, so I'll do it. And I think, you know, I I mean, you're sitting here plugging different racetracks every week. You know, and that that uh, you, you pick a different one. It's like, uh, hey, all you racetrack owners and uh, promoters and whatnot, throw some money at this because he's uh you know he's promoting your track. He's uh doing some advertising for you so you know he's not looking for thousands well maybe he is well but i mean <laughs> but no but, i mean i mean you know give him give him a little love you know throw, throw him throw him a few bones this way because he is bringing the 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 sport out into the open you know and out, out on the airwaves so to speak or the internet and letting you know i'm looking here at the the feed and looking at names that i don't even recognize from around the country so you know, it, it's like your name is getting out there at, at his expense. Help him out a little bit. Well, thanks, Roger. I appreciate that. And, hey, we work hard. You know, Lippy Lippy's a big part of this show. Obviously, he's not here tonight, but, um, you know, it, it's really taken off when Lippy, you know, just his – just his style, and he's he's a uh, he's a he's a good fit. And then Mike Michelson has, has stepped in and been a great uh, great help. So I mean, it's a it's a whole effort, you know. Like you know, I mean, it's not just one guy making it happen. But uh, no, you just don't flip the switch and have a show. No, I mean, well, you can try to, but I mean, it, it just I mean, it, it's got to be what's best and what works. I guess right. it's just like in racing. So we're learning every week, and that's. I mean, that's really all you can do. We're far from perfect. I know that. But, hey, maybe, well, you're not going to be moving up here anytime soon. I need a <laughs> producer. <laughs> but uh, No, I'm, I, I've got a cousin that lives up here, and I'm just up here for the holiday, you know, and it, it just happens to be that she lives five minutes from you. So Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. So I'll be there in the morning. Uh, during the day, I, I you know, I'll be there early, but uh, the, the, the uh, day show is going to be the undercard so to speak uh the the uh beginner box and box stock and 125s and 250s run during the day and then the 500s and the ford focus midgets will be uh saturday night should be you're gonna have pro fours oh that's right pro fours and then there's also the uh pacific uh pacific northwest micros i think are gonna be in town so boy it's gonna be a loaded show for ten dollars yeah i mean good night and uh practice going on tonight from six to nine so I don't know. Uh, that may be eventful, uneventful. I, I don't know how. I don't know. So I've, uh, some of the practices I've watched have been better than race days. You know, you yep. get the people out there testing and tuning, and they get out in the group with the guy that they plan on trying to beat the next day. You know, yep. and there, there's some good good racing on practice. Yeah, night. yeah. <laughs> but if you haven't seen them, I mean, Chance Crum is a superstar, fun to watch. Uh, you know. Uh, Nick Evans, defending champ, who just won it this year. Ryan Collins. I mean, there's just so many, uh, you know, Caleb Hart. I mean, there's just a lot of good 
good racers going to be there. So uh, Salem Speedway, that's on the Oregon State Fairgrounds, uh, ten bucks gets you in for all day and all night. And I mean, what do you say? You know. So Roger Freeborn, thanks for uh, taking some time. You know, an hour. It was a quick hour. It was a quick hour. That and, flew uh, by. Yeah, it flew by. And uh, that's that's the way it does. But uh, good, we, we good, covered good. almost everything too. Yeah, we did. <laughs> and and good seeing you, man. I mean, and you're welcome here. You know, anytime. Stop on by and be part of the show. Well, thank you, Terry. It was a pleasure being here. Good deal. We'll see you Wednesday night. Uh, we got some good, good, good stuff coming. Uh, Anna Marie Strawhand from uh, Marketing at Full Speed going to be with us. So you want to tune in? You sponsor Hunter. She'll have some tips on uh, what's going to be happening. While you're looking for sponsors, so make sure you tune in Wednesday night, 6.30, to Northwest Race Report. And that's exclusively at terrybridges.com. Or you can follow the uh, Facebook leads that we post up there. But uh, be sure you join us. Thanks a lot. We'll see you tomorrow.